again for joining us today for this Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy and I'll be hosting today's show. <clears throat> Up first on the uh, hazardous weather graphic, uh, yellow shaded area here along the uh, eastern Alaska range. That's a wind advisory that kicks into effect at midnight tonight and remains out until noon Saturday as uh, winds increase uh, 20 to 30 miles an hour looking for gust to 50 miles an hour and that's through the Alaska Range passes and then the wind should drop off tomorrow afternoon. Otherwise uh, that's the only advisory out in the entire state for the weekend or at least through tomorrow. Otherwise we have this uh, very slow moving system. Uh, as you can see it's just spinning up there about over or just south of the Central Brooks Range area and that brought uh, precipitation, higher elevations and two vaccines from snow today as well as, well as Areas of the Arctic coast, others had mixed rain and snow and uh, fog, but amounts are quite light with this system. Nothing uh, terribly heavy at all. And the southeast coast here is still looking good. Uh, another nice day with uh, lower clouds on the increase out along the coastline and offshore. And then out over the Bering Sea, we have this uh, system tracking northeastward, the main little center right in this area here, gradually edging in toward the southwest coast. And the front already by the Pribilof Islands now and uh, pushing inland, actually pushed in across the uh, Yukon Delta this afternoon and right along Cusacorn Bay there. And winds ahead of that, pretty gusty out of the south, uh, anywhere from 30, 40 miles an hour. Togiak seeing winds gusting as high as 36 miles per hour this afternoon, just ahead of the front with rain. Rain extending back to the southwest, tapering off, but nothing really heavy even over the last 24 hours. Rainfall amounts uh, no more than uh, half an inch or so. And also here in the mid Tanaw Valley, more rain today in the Fairbanks area. And they had uh, 24 hour amounts of up to a half an inch there in the greater Fairbanks area. And then this uh, system pushing some moisture, nothing into south central Alaska yet, a little bit there on the uh, southern part of Kodiak Island, and uh, most of it back to the west here, and then on down along the Alaska Peninsula, drying out west of Adak, and also back to the northwest here, drying out uh, Seward Peninsula with uh, easterly winds in the head of that front there at Nome, kicking up to about 30 miles an hour this afternoon, keeping it mostly dry. Could be some isolated showers, mostly out over Norton Sound. Some of those could be reaching the coastline here currently, but uh, Nome just reporting overcast skies, northeast winds gusting about 30 miles an hour, and it looks like some sunshine here over the uh, inland areas across the central Seward Peninsula on up into Noatak Valley, and those areas are generally cloudy here in across the uh, Koyukuk Valley. And of course, uh, this uh, boundary, weak frontal boundary actually, keeping the wet conditions, cloudy skies, and again, higher elevations of the Brooks Range, falling in the form of snow, but very light amounts up through this area. But uh, Pribilofs seeing west winds at St. Paul gusts to 40 miles an hour this afternoon. So there were some gale force winds with this in the, as well as ahead of the front there. And uh, pretty breezy there along the uh, Yukon Delta coast as well. Anywhere 30, 35 miles an hour in wind gusts with that. With uh, rainfall amounts to get about a quarter of an inch with this at uh, the Bethel area. Generally representative of the entire zone there, Toledo up to the northeast had about a third of an inch of precipitation. Otherwise, uh, also the Pribilofs with the front coming through had about a half an inch, but uh, that's tapered off now with the front pushing east, just some scattered showers and pretty breezy conditions. Winds diminish as you get down toward the Aleutians as well as the rain. Uh, not really a whole lot of rain falling in uh, Alaska today, about a third of an inch along the Alaska Peninsula, and that's just now making its way onto uh, southwest Kodiak Island, Sitkanak, Akiak, and those areas and some moisture will get into Kodiak eventually. And the forecast for tonight, uh, low clouds and fog continue to uh, increase here along the southeast coast, otherwise staying dry. 
no big changes through tonight for that area. And this uh, weak trough still persistent here, and that's going to keep it a little uh, unsettled, but uh, not so much on the rainfall amounts for the Tanana Valley up to the White Mountains there. As this system pumps more moisture eastward and northeastward, look for rain to increase tonight. South Central Alaska front will push rain across Kodiak Island. Late tonight tapering off to showers as it pushes eastward. And could be some moderate amounts of rain southern eastern Kenai Peninsula up into western Prince William Sound, but not looking for uh, anything really heavy. And then areas of light rain back along with the front uh, across the Cuscombe Valley, western Cook Inlet, pushing northward across the Peninsula this evening. And this very slow moving low pressure area is still off the coast uh, late tonight. So it's going to keep it cloudy with areas of rain. But the winds will diminish a little bit behind the front, but stay pretty gusty here across Minovac Island with the main low center. Gusty winds continuing. Uh, St. Lawrence Island with occasional rain and fog back up the, uh, the Seward Peninsula. Those winds will diminish along the coast there as the rain increases. Stays dry up over the northwest uh, Shishmaref on up across Kotzebue Sound, Noatak Valley. Isolated to scattered rain or snow showers. Again, any elevation at all being in the form of snow and amounts really probably not measurable at all. So the very light amounts, not anything significant. Back out to the west, another trough uh, spreading some more moisture, but not much in the way of wind into the western Aleutians. Drying out for Adak and Atka with uh, winds really dropping off, areas of fog, possible southern Bering Sea. And then for the outlook tomorrow, that front uh, continues to push eastward and begins to weaken, especially right through this area, Copper River Basin, the Tanaw Valley. Uh, I wouldn't look for a whole lot of rain, just areas of light rain or showers with that. And again, those winds, downsloping winds, that's going to tend to uh, keep uh, shut the rain off on the north side of the mountains there with those gusts of 50 miles an hour until about noon then they'll drop off when the front weakens enough and also pushes eastward. Still have an area of uh, moisture across the upper Yukon Valley Eastern Brooks Range lingering light rain or snow showers or a mixed condition probably more mixed probably won't see anything that's just plain rain but uh, mixed or just plain light snow again nothing really measurable. Low center still off the Yukon Delta coast, but slowly nudging its way eastward. And uh, that's going to allow rain to spread northward into uh, the uh, Kobuk Valley on out towards Selawik and Kotzebue. Offshore flow here keeps it dry. Kivalina, Point Hope, Cape Lisbourne, as well as much of the western Arctic coast. And just some scattered showers here coming in behind it with the uh, weaker southwest flow, mostly cloudy skies. Could see some afternoon clearing, Southern Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula. Maybe Homer Seldovia you could see some afternoon sun as well as the east side of Kodiak Island. And this wave developing right through here, that's going to bring a chance of rain back to the Alaska Peninsula. Uh, depending on how far north it goes, south side has the best chances of seeing more rain with that tomorrow. Also, finally, some rain pushes into the uh, north coast of the pan and with clouds increasing on down to the south. And then for the uh, outlook, you can see that system makes a pretty good jog well into Canada for Sunday with the front trailing back into the uh, central and southern panhandle, kind of iffy on the front, ar arguably in this position, maybe back to the north a little bit Sunday afternoon. Uh, but anyway, that's where the heaviest rainfall amounts will be with a jet stream slowly sagging southward. This uh, trough, another system, tries to come up toward the Alaska Peninsula. And depending upon how far north the jet stream is, depends on how much rain will reach, again, the Alaska Peninsula or Kodiak Island. Right now, I'd bring an increasing chance of rain to southern Kodiak Island in the afternoon. Otherwise, look for uh, partly sunny skies. Jet stream now to the south on the cool side, so the heaviest rain, as I mentioned, will be directed in toward the southeast coast with that frontal boundary. More of an unsettled, cool, showery pattern, which means, again, some clearing possible here for the north Gulf Coast. A more extensive area of, uh, or a more widespread area of showers along this trough axis with that weakening low pushing in. Uh, well, actually moves up to Norton Sound, weakens to about 992 millibars, trough back to the southwest, Bering Sea, cloudy, showery, low clouds, fog, drizzle, and less wind. Eastern Arctic coast at upper level low is still affecting the area there, and so look for occasional light rain, snow, or fog, or a mixture thereof, but again, it'll be light, winds will be light, and not bad dry on the west side. Low temperatures for tonight for the southeast coast, upper 30s to upper 40s, and uh, mostly in the upper 30s, eastern Copper River Basin, Northway, and the eastern, or the 40 mile country in the upper 30s, otherwise 40s to mid 40s here to upper 40s along the coast, near 50 for the Alaska Peninsula. 
and uh, 27 to 32 up over the eastern Arctic coast and north slope areas with uh, low 40s for the Seward Peninsula. And then the highs for Saturday afternoon, uh, just 31 over at Kaktovik, lower 30s here for the eastern Arctic coast, uh, upper 30s on the west side near 50 in the Kobuk Valley out toward Kotzebue, as well as the upper Yukon Valley, 55 to 61 or two for the Susitna Valley, Kenai Peninsula, upper 50s, southern southeast coast, maybe near 60, and lower 50s for the Aleutians. Low temperatures for Sunday morning, 25 to 30 up here in the north areas of the Brooks Range on out to the Arctic coast, milder though for the west side, 40s here over the southwest interior, and 30s for the Copper River Basin, 40s for the Panhandle highs, not too bad, 50s mid to upper for the southeast coast as well as the south central Alaska area. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First line weather graphic shows a lot of IFR from the uh, Arctic Ocean here, all the way down to the Brooks Range and some of that trying to spill over into the Kobuk Koyukuk Valley on the north ends there. Marginal VFR to the south, a lot of marginal VFR here over the southern uh, half of Alaska with a lot of IFR here along the Alaska Range, Kenai Peninsula, North Gulf Coast, a lot of hills up to eastern Norton Sound, Kodiak Island, uh, southern Kodiak Island, mostly marginal Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, Bering Sea. And for the afternoon tomorrow, after the VFR starts, a marginal VFR and even IFR slips on in to uh, the northern Lynn Canal Glacier Bay areas there uh, and the passes. Otherwise, marginal VFR down the coastline, uh, still a pretty good VFR day, central and southern Panhandle, IFR North Gulf Coast and the Coast Range, less IFR along the Alaska Range, IFR now eastern Beaufort Sea Coast, and uh, lesser over the North Slope, still massive. Nothing but marginal out over the Bering Sea and the Aleutians, but a distinct lack of IFR. And then for the uh, flying weather on Sunday morning, no change out here over the west. And some areas of IFR across southern Alaska, especially over the mountainous terrain here, Auckland Mountains and Kilbrook, and then the uh, Alaska Range, and then also here over the Copper River Basin, mostly surrounding it there over the Talkeetnas along the coast range. Panhandle, a big change, marginal, uh, <laughs> kind of a big area IFR now, otherwise marginal, and from the Brooks Range on out to the eastern Arctic coast, IFR. And for the afternoon on Sunday, that uh, pulls back, mostly marginal now along the Arctic coast and north slope, a uh, swath of VFR here from the, oh, roughly the Koyukuk Valley, back out to the northwest coast there, Kotzebue Sound, Seward Peninsula, looking pretty good Sunday afternoon, and marginal VFR south to Bristol, Bristol Bay, and all of the Bering and the Aleutians once again, the southeast coast, IFR now over toward the eastern border, otherwise marginal, and marginal to IFR here, southern, southeast, interior Alaska. Anatovic, marginal VFR times tomorrow, same forecast we're adding in as well, occasionally marginal. And for Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR, IFR, uh, pretty likely on the western approaches of both passes. Same forecast for rainy, that same pattern, uh, lowest conditions will be on the western entrance, otherwise marginal VFR. Windy, IFR uh, trending toward marginal at times, and uh, Isabel just call it occasionally, mar or occasionally IFR, otherwise marginal. And for Mentasta, marginal VFR. Tanita, IFR, they'll trend toward uh, marginal VFR, so slow improvement trend possibly into the afternoon with the IFR mainly in the morning. And Portage, start to finish, starting out low, IFR, may become VFR later in the afternoon. <clears throat> And for Chilkoot and White, starting out VFR, but uh, maybe by midday or into the afternoon becoming IFR, certainly toward evening. And for the freezing level, 6,000 feet here, 6 to 8,000 feet, uh, 8,000 over Kodiak Island, 6,000 up into the Cuscombe Valley, Western Alaska Range, also the southeast coast. Uh, chillier up to the north there, 2,000 feet uh, from the Brooks Range on out to the Arctic coast. And then, of course, tomorrow morning at the surface down to the mountains there and a little bit to the south. About 6,000 here over the Bering Sea. Icing, a uh, pretty widespread area of isolated moderate here, about 5,000 feet into the interior, northward to the eastern Arctic coast. Could be a little bit of moderate up there uh, over the extreme areas. Above 2,000 feet there, the freezing level is lower now, so no more of this stuff, 9 to 11,000 feet, feet and up for the icing. Definitely lower here over the southeast coast. Could be some areas of moderate there. Uh, 
Elfin Cove on up to possibly Yakutat. And the jet stream, strong 150 knot southwest jet here just south of the Alaska Peninsula near Kodiak Island coming over the top of the ridge, kind of almost paralleling North, North Gulf Coast and off to the southwest. Very slow moving upper level low here, been uh, there for several days now, this doesn't want to kick out, this one gradually tracking right up to the southwest coast. And at 9,000 feet, uh, southwesterlies, 35 knots across Kodiak, uh, 15 southern Panmail, 30 knots in the north, northeast 15 to 20, back here to the northwest, wrapping around southeast bearing, 30 to 45 knots. 3,000 feet, same pattern, 30, 40 knots here coming around the, back, uh, the bottom of this low, 40 knots right into the southwest interior, otherwise 25, northeast 15, Arctic coast, much lighter for the Aleutians, especially out west. Turbulence, moderate chop here, on Alaska Island to Kodiak, Southwest Interior, Copper River Basin, below 5,000 feet. It's kind of hard to explain how important weather is to our job. I mean, it really affects everything we do. In 2018, NOAA launches the GOES-S satellite, which takes its place in orbit as GOES-17. Working together with GOES-16, the two new geostationary weather satellites will provide constant watch over the United States and the Western Hemisphere, from the west coast of Africa all the way to New Zealand, helping monitor severe storms, wildfires, and daily weather patterns. Since its launch, NOAA's GO-16 satellite has already demonstrated its critical capability for keeping our nation weather ready. Throughout the active 2017 hurricane season, GOES-16 delivered imagery with detail and clarity never achieved before, with four times greater resolution than previous NOAA satellites, and delivered this imagery faster than ever before, helping forecasters predict the path of a storm and where and when it will intensify. These accurate and timely forecasts allowed for emergency managers to prepare for evacuations, map flood areas, and save lives. So the weather matters. Uh, the weather matters before the weather happens, and the weather matters after uh, the event happens because what we're able to do to prepare, uh, allocate resources, uh, provide information to the public through the media uh, beforehand, and what we're able to do afterwards, how uh, and when the waters are going to recede so we know we can get vehicles with life-saving food and shelter equipment uh, down a particular highway, all of that depends on the forecast. In the GOES West position, GOES-17 will be able to provide critical data for the westernmost United States, Alaska, and Hawaii. We're talking about getting data updates in just seconds, so we can quickly spot wildfires and closely monitor the wind direction and their intensity. The crispness of the data coming in at a faster rate will also help with fog forecasts. We can see the moment the strata starts to develop or when it starts to move out. Like GOES-16, GO-17 carries a suite of advanced instruments, including tools for sophisticated earth sensing, lightning detecting, solar imaging, and space weather monitoring. As an equal partner in the sky, GO-17 will expand coverage of the advanced baseline imager technology across the Pacific Ocean, allowing meteorologists and local officials to see severe weather systems developing in real time. So instead of seeing something, say, this large, that as you zoom in, actually gets kind of blurry, you're actually gonna see something that is much more detailed. In its GOES West position, GOES 17 will be able to monitor conditions in the western U.S. like wildfires, coastal fog, and atmospheric rivers when storms from the Pacific dump heavy rain and snow over the western U.S. GOES 17 will have a major impact on fighting wildfires in California. Up-to-the-minute information in crisp detail allows forecasters to spot fires faster than ever before, even before the first 911 calls come in, and to better track and predict the path of large, dynamic, and dangerous fires. It's amazing to see what we can get uh, and at the level of detail and the speed uh, that we can get the information down into the ground that makes our decision-making uh, way more accurate. With a view of the Pacific Ocean, GOES-17 will also provide a critical eye over shipping lanes vital to the U.S. economy, protecting cargo and passenger vessels from dangerous ocean storms. GOES-17 will also provide a high-definition view over Alaska, 
resulting in better weather forecasts and improved monitoring of sea ice, wildfires, and volcanic ash. The advanced baseline imager on GO-17 can distinguish between clouds, sea ice, and snow cover, a critical need during Alaska's dark, cloudy winter months. GOES-17's geostationary lightning mapper monitors lightning flashes, including the in-cloud lightning most prevalent in severe storms, helping forecasters determine when a storm is forming, intensifying, and becoming more dangerous. Thanks to GOES-17, emergency managers will be equipped with more accurate weather predictions and faster warnings, providing a real impact, saving lives, and protecting infrastructure. Watching over Earth from 22,300 miles above, GOES-S will provide vital data to our weather-ready nation. Hi, I'm JPSS. I'm a high-tech weather satellite that orbits our planet. I do something called a polar orbit. I circle the Earth from North Pole to South Pole, over and over, while the Earth spins. While I do that, I get lots of information about what's going on around the globe. I watch storms, clouds, and rain. I take the temperature of the ocean, measure air quality, ozone health, and take pictures of the land and sea. This information is used for all kinds of things. It helps us take care of our coasts and oceans and all the amazing things that live there. It helps us monitor harmful weather events like floods and droughts and measure the health of the environment. Most importantly, it helps us predict weather three to seven days in the future. That means I can be a big help ahead of storms where future warnings are important. I send information to the National Weather Service. They use the information to create forecasts. The forecasts are shared with people all over the country to help prepare for weather emergencies. So you look to the sky and wave. I'll be flying by. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back, looking at today's sea ice analysis. Not a lot different from what we saw yesterday. And the forecast, or actually there is new ice now forming, especially up through this area here, and even more so back up to that farther north area. Uh, so new ice starting to form, and winds uh, about Monday, first part of next week, and could come, are gonna become north and northwest as an upper cold upper low drop southeastward. And it'll start to drift, uh, especially this portion, back southward. Uh, probably won't reach the coast, though, but it'll kind of turn things around. And a slow increase in the sea ice coverage now expected as well. Coastal water forecast, uh, southeast coast, southern part of the coast here on the south coast. West-southwest, 10 to 15, 4 to 5 foot seas. South winds increase to 20 knots here on the north coast. Seas about 5 feet. Gale force gasoline canal out of the south with uh, sustained winds of 20 knots. Variable at 10 for the central and southern inside waters. Outlook for Sunday, we've got uh, south winds 20 knots for the entire area here, or at least for Clarence Strait, Stevens Passage, and Lynn Canal, south 20 with uh, four foot seas. Now uh, Stevens Passage seeing the gale force gusts out of the south. Back along the coast, uh, small craft advisories, north and central coast, 25 knots out of the west, a little lighter down south, but seas running nine to 10 feet. And Cook Inlet tomorrow, small craft advisories, south to, south to southwest winds, 25 knots, 7 to 6 foot seas, southwest 15 for Kamishak Bay, 20 knot winds from the southwest of the Barren Islands on up uh, across the North Gulf Coast, turning southerly here on the east side, east winds 20 for Prince William Sound, seas 3 feet. Those will become light out of the southwest on Sunday with seas at about two feet. Southwest 15 here for the North Gulf Coast, the Barren Islands, Kamishak Bay, and uh, Gale, or not Gales, small craft advisories continue for Cook Inlet on Sunday, south to southwest at 25 knots. 
Bristol Bay, southwest 25 knots, as well as the north side of the Alaska Peninsula. Well, seas will be up to 11 feet. Pacific side, southwest 20 to 25, all the way up to Sitkanak, 11 foot seas. 20 to 25 knots, southwest Windsor Kodiak Island, as well with uh, 6 to 10 foot seas. And then on Sunday, coming down, still southwest, 15 to 20, Kodiak Island, Sitkanak, Cape Sarich to Cape Sarich, yeah, southwest, a lot lighter, 10 knots now, but the sea still up around 8 to 10 feet. Southwest 20 on the uh, Bering Sea side of the peninsula with 8-foot seas and small craft advisories for Bristol Bay. Western Aleutians, not bad tomorrow. Actually, the entire stretch of the Aleutian chain, nothing heavy wind-wise coming up this weekend. West-southwest 15 for the western zone. Central Aleutians, west 15, Fox Islands 10 to 20 knots out of the west sea, 7 to 10 feet. And then 10 to 15 knot winds, basically on average uh, westerly, except on Alaska Island, more southwest with seven to nine foot seas. West northwest, Adak and Apgat, 15 knots. Northwest, 15 for those western zones. And for the southwest coast, gales right into Cuscombe Bay, 35 knots, 15 foot seas. Pribilofs west, 35, 15 foot seas. Southwest, 30 here north of uh, Nunavak Island. North side of the low, other side there, it'll be northeast 30 for St. Lawrence Island with 10-foot seas. And the outlook for uh, Sunday, Norton Sound, east 20, north 20 St. Lawrence Island, turning northwest here, north of Nunavak Island at 20 knots, coming down to 25. Still good for a small craft advisory there for the areas south of Nunavak Island. West 20 for the Pribilofs, north 15 St. Matthew Island. Eastern Beaufort Sea coast or eastern and central coast, northeast 15 tomorrow, 3 to 4-foot seas, 20 knots on the west side become northeast from Cape Beaufort all the way down to the Bering Strait. And for Sunday, northeast 15 to 20 here from Wales up to Cape Beaufort. Western coast, east at 20 and drop down to 10 for the central coast, northeast at 10. So pretty light up here on Sunday, central and eastern Beaufort Sea coast. For tonight, low pressure slowly edging its way eastward to the Yukon Delta coast. Keeps it wet and windy out there. Front advances rain eastward across south central Alaska, Kenai Peninsula into Prince William Sound, back to the northwest, less precipitation with its persistent upper level trough here in the northeast part of the state, and just uh, scattered rain or snow showers areas of fog for the Arctic coast. Another dry evening here for the panel, but you'll see the change coming in tomorrow with north, uh, rain reaching the north coast some point in the day, and rain along the front, eastern north Gulf coast, weakening through here, areas of light rain, wind advisory for the passes of the Alaska range, with gusts of 50 miles an hour, areas of rain through the central part of the state and throw some wind in with that along the southwest coast. And for Sunday, that system's out of the picture except for the panhandle unsettled and showery for the interior.